Gronkowski. Gronkowski had been in the oh, Look at that. Exclamation <laughs> point. Is here is Brady's pass. It's Gronkowski. Back again. The biggest tandem for touchdowns now in postseason history. He's one of the most dynamic players ever to step onto the gridiron. A supreme talent and unforgettable character all wrapped into one. A freak of nature who became the gold standard for tight ends, played an integral role for football's most indomitable dynasty, and never took himself too seriously, even as he was cementing himself as an NFL legend. This is the story behind Rob Gronkowski. Robert James Gronkowski was born May 14, 1989 in Amherst, New York, where he joined a veritable army of athletic prodigies. The fourth of five boys, Rob was all but destined for a life in sports. His great-grandfather was a decorated Olympian and former world record holder in cycling, while his father Gordy played offensive line at Syracuse in the late 1970s. And Gordy ensured that his sons would continue the family's strong athletic tradition, building them a home that was a jock's paradise. In their backyard, the Gronkowskis had a baseball field, a pool and a hot tub, and a tennis court with basketball and hockey nets. Meanwhile, their basement was filled with thousands of dollars worth of workout equipment. It's no stretch to say that sports were a way of life for the five Gronkowski boys, all of whom played just about everything under the sun and feverishly competed against one another to be the biggest, strongest, and fastest of the lot. And that testosterone-filled environment was a critical incubator for young Rob. As he told ESPN years later, it got me physically tough, my brothers beating up on me, and mentally tough, being able to get my mind right to take them on. And before long, it was abundantly clear that Rob was bound for a career in sports. In high school, Gronkowski was a three-sport standout, excelling at baseball, basketball, and football, while his combination of size and athleticism made him, as one of his coaches put it, a man amongst boys. It was on the gridiron, though, that the 6'6", 250-pound teenager shined the brightest. He starred on both sides of the ball at Williamsville North, then solidified himself as one of the most highly touted tight end recruits in the country after playing out his senior season at a Pittsburgh high school. And while many top recruits become increasingly serious and guarded as the prospect of going pro crystallizes, that wasn't the case for Gronkowski, who developed a reputation as a relentlessly fun-loving, incorrigible goofball while he was establishing himself as a potential future NFL star. A prime example? He once intentionally missed a free throw during a high school basketball game to keep his team's score at 69. Seriously. Still, just about every major college football program in the country wanted a piece of him. His father estimated that Rob received 65 scholarship offers, including ones from powerhouses like Clemson and Ohio State. In the end, however, Gronkowski decided to take his talents to the University of Arizona, a scuffling Pac-10 program almost a decade removed from its last winning season. When his father asked him why, Gronkowski responded, Dad, if you ever went to a pool party at Arizona, you'd understand. And soon enough, the football world came to understand that Gronkowski was a special talent, blessed with the size and blocking acumen of a lineman and the hands and athleticism of a wide receiver. As a true freshman, Gronkowski recorded six touchdowns, set a new Arizona record for receiving yards by a tight end, and finished 14th in the country in yards per reception. And he was even more impressive as a sophomore, breaking the receiving yards record he had set the year prior and hauling in 10 touchdowns despite missing multiple games due to injury. His stock was skyrocketing. He looked like a future first round NFL draft pick. And then Gronkowski was dealt a major blow. Ahead of his junior season, Gronkowski felt something pop in his back while lifting weights. He was unfazed at first and continued on with his offseason regimen, but as the start of the season crept closer, the pain in his back intensified and eventually got so bad that he wasn't able to run. Ultimately, an MRI revealed a ruptured disc and nerve damage, and that latter part was especially disconcerting. As Gronkowski later explained, if the nerves didn't fully heal, he could lose full use of his legs. So, following a fruitless attempt to rehabilitate his ailing back through physical therapy, Gronkowski underwent surgery to repair the ruptured disc, sidelining him for the entirety of his junior season and casting a pall over his NFL future. However, he was undeterred, and instead of returning to Arizona for his senior year to reinflate his draft stock, Gronkowski declared for the 2010 NFL NFL draft. And while concerns over his health did indeed bump him out of the first round, he didn't have to wait too long before hearing his name called. 
With the 42nd pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Rob Gronkowski. Tight end, Arizona. surface, the New England Patriots may have seemed like an odd fit given their emphasis on discipline and attention to detail and Gronkowski's rambunctious spirit. Furthermore, as head coach Bill Belichick later admitted, Gronkowski's pre-draft visit with New England was a disaster, with the young tight end falling asleep on the floor midway through. But his potential was so great that the Patriots were willing to take a shot on him, a decision that would eventually help re-establish New England as the NFL's preeminent powerhouse and transform Gronkowski into one of the NFL's all-time greats. Paired up with the inimitable Tom Brady, it was clear from day one that Gronk was going to be a problem for opposing defenses. In his NFL debut, Gronkowski helped put the finishing touches on a New England victory with his first career receiving touchdown. The fake, the Brady throw, back to the end zone, and the catch by the rookie, Rob Gronkowski for the touchdown. Two weeks later, Gronkowski found the end zone again and punctuated his score with an old school celebration that would come to be his signature, the Gronk Spike. One second on the play clock. Good block by Fuller. Another touchdown, Gronkowski. The second of his career, a five yard hit, and Brady has thrown his third touchdown pass today. Then, in New England's Week 10 matchup against the Pittsburgh Steelers, Gronk had himself an epic coming out party, becoming just the fourth tight end in Patriots history and the first since 1995 with three receiving touchdowns in a game. Barely a half season into his NFL career, the big-bodied rookie was becoming one of Brady's favorite red zone targets and was ultimately showcasing game-changing potential as a pass catcher. Gronkowski averaged more than 50 receiving yards per game over New England's final six regular season contests in 2010 and added four more touchdowns during that stretch. And he memorably capped his rookie campaign with his first career 100 receiving yard performance. All told, Gronkowski led the 14-2 Patriots with 10 receiving touchdowns, four more than New England's other dynamic rookie tight end, Aaron Hernandez. In doing so, Gronkowski set a new franchise record for rookie tight ends while finishing tied for first in the NFL in touchdowns at his position. It was unquestionably one of the most impressive rookie seasons ever from a tight end. And Gronk was only scratching the surface. In his sophomore season, Gronkowski immediately became the fulcrum of the Patriots passing attack. Not only Brady's go-to red zone target, but a yardage monster who made plays that most tight ends wouldn't dream of. In the Patriots season opener, Gronkowski racked up 86 receiving yards and a touchdown. In week two, Gronkowski again hauled in 86 receiving yards with a pair of touchdowns. The following Sunday, he eclipsed 100 receiving yards and again scored twice. The dude was unguardable. His route running was impeccable. His hands were magnetic. He was too fast for linebackers and too big for defensive backs. Seemingly, the only thing opposing defenses could do was pray. And by season's end, Gronkowski had solidified himself not only as the game's premier tight end, but as the new paragon for the position, combining size, athleticism, and both blocking and pass catching ability like no tight end before him. That year, Gronkowski led the NFL with 17 receiving touchdowns, establishing a new single season record for tight ends. Fun fact, Gronkowski had more multi-touchdown games in 2011 than zero touchdown games. Meanwhile, he also set a then NFL record for single season receiving yards by a tight end with 1,327, 17 more than Jimmy Graham racked up that year. Gronkowski's assault on football's record books earned him his first career Pro Bowl and All-Pro honors and landed him a six-year, $53 million contract extension from the Patriots. It also helped turn Gronk into football's foremost fan favorite. His brilliance on the field, combined with his jocular, fun-loving personality, captivated the football world and elevated Gronk into a cultural phenomenon of sorts. He was truly one of a kind in his ability to dominate on the field and have more fun than anyone who ever lived off of it. After all, Shannon Sharp never had his own party bus. I'm picking up one lucky fan and their friend to get crazy with us on this party bus. Tony Gonzalez never had his own party ship. What's up? I'm here live at the Grand Cruise. I've been working out all week with my brother. Everyone thought I was working out for next season, but obviously I was working out for this cruise, baby. That's why these pipes are gigantic right now. And Mike Ditka certainly never twerked in his life. As Gronk once put it in a memorable Spanish language interview, yo soy fiesta, 
which translates to, I am party. And it seemed like nothing could bring this party down. Except, as it turned out, that wasn't entirely true. In the wake of his quiet performance in his team's stunning loss to the New York Giants in Super Bowl 46, Gronkowski came out strong once again in 2012. He had double-digit touchdowns before Thanksgiving hit and remained the centerpiece of football's most prolific offense. And then, for the first time in his pro career, he was cut down by injury. In New England's Week 11 blowout of Indianapolis, Gronkowski fractured his forearm, ending his streak of consecutive games played at 43 and sidelining him for roughly six weeks. And although he returned in time for the postseason, Gronkowski was a non-factor in New England's fruitless playoff run after breaking his forearm again in the divisional round and the injuries just kept on coming. Following the 2012 campaign, renewed discomfort in Gronk's back led to another surgery to repair a herniated disc, a procedure that sidelined him for the first six games of 2013. Gronkowski was as dominant as ever upon his return, but it wasn't long before he was back on the shelf. During New England's Week 14 matchup against Cleveland, Gronkowski took a hit directly to his right knee from Brown safety TJ Ward. The Patriots star had to be carted off the field, and the ensuing diagnosis was a grim one. Gronkowski had torn both his ACL and MCL, making it two seasons in a row marred by serious injuries. There had always been concerns about Gronkowski's durability given his size and style of play, and now it seemed those concerns were being realized. And the growing uncertainty over Gronkowski's availability was far from ideal for the Patriots, who had lost both Hernandez and Pro Bowl wide receiver Wes Welker following the 2012 campaign. If the Patriots were gonna get back to football's mountaintop, they needed a healthy Gronk to take them there, and a healthy Gronk was far from a sure thing. The attrition was readily apparent when Gronk took the field in 2014, sporting a brace on his surgically repaired knee and padding on his left arm. But as it turned out, despite all the punishment his body had taken, Gronk was ready to take the Patriots back to the promised land. Although New England used him relatively sparingly early on in 2014 as he got back up to speed, Gronk still made his presence known, hauling in touchdowns in three of his first four games. And after racking up 100 yards and a TD in a commanding Week 5 win, it was clear that Gronk was back. He continued to dominate all season long as the Patriots powered their way to a 12-4 record. In the end, Gronk finished tied for fourth in the NFL with a dozen receiving touchdowns while leading all tight ends in receiving yards. And critically, he appeared in all but one regular season contest, missing only the Patriots' inconsequential Week 17 matchup. His monster campaign easily earned him Comeback Player of the Year, but his magical season wasn't over yet. In his first trip to the postseason with a clean bill of health in years, Gronk was a man possessed. In the Patriots' divisional round showdown against Baltimore, Gronk racked up seven receptions for 108 yards and a touchdown, helping New England to a narrow 35-31 victory. He then found pay dirt again in the Patriots' shellacking of the Colts for the AFC Championship. And in his second career Super Bowl appearance two weeks later, Gronkowski showed up in a big way, hauling in a 22-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter and finishing with 68 receiving yards in New England's unforgettable win over the Legion of Boom Seattle Seahawks. With touchdowns in all three of New England's postseason games, Gronkowski was instrumental in helping the Patriots snap their decade-long Super Bowl drought and launching the second glorious chapter of the Brady-Belichick era. And you better believe that nobody on that roster, or throughout all of New England, partied harder than Gronk did after that Super Bowl win. At only 25 years old, Gronkowski was already carving out a path to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He was entrenching himself as the new gold standard at his position, with multiple All-Pro nominations, a Comeback Player of the Year award, several hallowed single season records, and now a Super Bowl championship. Meanwhile, he was also enjoying a level of celebrity and pop culture ubiquity that eludes most football players, parlaying his success and party boy persona into countless endorsement deals, endless media coverage, and cameo after cameo. What's up, butt munchers? That's us! He called us butt munches! We're butt munches! <laughs> yeah! Right. All right, time to gronk a dump in my new house. And he wasn't done gronking yet. In 2015, Gronkowski turned in a second consecutive season and third career season with more than a thousand receiving yards and double-digit touchdowns. 
Throughout the first 95 years of NFL history, there had only been 13 such seasons from a tight end, and Gronk had three of them. His sublime 2015 campaign also marked the fifth time in his six NFL seasons that he'd racked up at least 10 receiving touchdowns. In fact, from his 2010 debut through 2015, no player recorded more receiving touchdowns than Gronk. And although the Patriots failed to repeat as Super Bowl champs, that was through no fault of Gronkowski, who scored three touchdowns and logged 227 receiving yards across New England's two postseason games. With that, however, Gronkowski's time as the game's most fearsome offensive weapon mostly came to an end, with more injury problems relegating him to the sidelines, curtailing his effectiveness, and eventually forcing him into an early retirement. In 2016, a hamstring injury and renewed back issues limited Gronkowski to just eight regular season games. And the superstar didn't suit up in the postseason as the Patriots chased down and ultimately captured their second championship in a three-year span, defeating the Atlanta Falcons in the biggest comeback in Super Bowl history. In an impressive display of resilience, Gronk looked like his old self for much of 2017 recording his fourth 1,000-yard season, securing another All-Pro nod, and turning in a mammoth performance in the Patriots' Super Bowl loss to the Eagles, but he later admitted that the grind started to get to him that year. In fact, he actually said he was happy for the one-week suspension he received late in the season for a hit he delivered on Tredavious White of the Buffalo Bills. By the following season, Gronkowski had clearly lost some of his dynamism, recording only 682 receiving yards and three touchdowns, despite suiting up for 13 regular season games. And after grinding his way through yet another Super Bowl run, this one culminating with the Patriots' 13-3 win over the Los Angeles Rams and their third title in five years, Gronkowski announced his retirement just months ahead of his 30th birthday. In explaining his decision, Gronkowski cited the immense physical and mental toll that his almost decade in the NFL had taken on him, and mentioned that he couldn't even relish the Patriots' victory in Super Bowl 53 because of how much pain he was in. As he put it, I needed to recover. I was not in a good place. Football was bringing me down, and I didn't like it. I was losing that joy in life. And so ended one of the most indelible, impactful careers in NFL history. Just like that, the party was over. But every good party has an after party, right? Barely 12 months after announcing his retirement, Gronkowski pulled a 180. His longtime quarterback, who had recently left New England for Tampa Bay, had been cajoling him to come join him in South Florida, and Gronkowski couldn't say no. So, after sitting out just one season, Gronkowski unretired and orchestrated a trade from the Patriots, who still held his contract rights, to the Buccaneers. The band was back together, and they were about to make some sweet music. With renewed health following a year-long layoff and a less demanding role within the Buccaneers, Buccaneers' deep passing attack, Gronkowski kicked off the second act of his career with aplomb. He played in all 16 regular season games for Tampa Bay in 2020, notching seven touchdowns and 623 receiving yards for the 11-5 Bucks. And although he took a back seat for much of Tampa Bay's postseason run, Gronk delivered when it mattered most. In Super Bowl 55, Gronkowski turned back the clock, hauling in two touchdowns and 67 receiving yards and propelling the Bucks to a commanding victory over Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. In the process, Gronkowski further cemented his place in the annals of Super Bowl history. No tight end has more receiving yards or touchdowns in Super Bowl games than him. Meanwhile, his pair of touchdowns in Super Bowl 55 established Gronk and Brady as the most productive touchdown duo in playoff history, surpassing Joe Montana and Jerry Rice. And after a year like that, how could Gronkowski not run it back? Following the Bucks' championship run, Gronkowski re-upped with Tampa Bay for the 2021 campaign, a season in which he was arguably better than he was the year prior. Although he missed five games due to a rib injury and a punctured lung, Gronkowski tallied 802 receiving yards, his most since 2017, while finishing second on the 13-4 Bucks in receiving touchdowns. He also scored a touchdown in Tampa's wildcard round win over Philadelphia and recorded 85 receiving yards in their divisional round loss to the eventual Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams. And as it turned out, that was Gronkowski's swan song. Roughly four months after the Bucks lost to the Rams, Gronkowski retired for the second and final time, walking away from the game with greater peace than he had three years prior and with a resume largely unrivaled among tight ends. For his position, his 93 career touchdowns ranked third all time, behind only Antonio Gates and Gonzalez. His 9,286 receiving yards ranked sixth on the all-time leaderboard. Those totals, however, would be considerably higher were it not 
fought for the incessant injuries. And those rankings belie how unstoppable the five-time Pro Bowler and four-time All-Pro was at his peak. Among tight ends with at least 140 games played, Gronkowski ranked second all-time in both yards per game and yards per reception. And in terms of touchdowns per game, he's head and shoulders above everyone else. Meanwhile, his postseason numbers are perhaps even more impressive. 15 touchdowns and almost 1,400 yards in 22 games, numbers that helped him earn four Super Bowl rings. No tight end has more. And while reasonable people can disagree over whether Gronkowski is the greatest tight end ever to play the game, his name certainly belongs in the conversation. But what's undeniable is that football has never seen a player as gifted and gregarious as Gronk, a generational talent who carved out one of the most incredible legacies in NFL history and did it all with a smile on his face. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.